Hi, it's The Wire. It's September 28th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me say, we're all gamblers here. When you're betting on a fighter, you need to know if the fighter has some mental health issues. If the guy is under stress and has something in his profile that just does not allow him to completely focus on his next opponent. Right? You need to know that. A distracted boxer is a higher risk fighter. Right? You need to know whether the guy is in the present or is living in the past, dealing with demons, etc. Some of the better fighters I've seen were guys who had mental health issues. Right? Understand, Oliver McCall beat Lennox Lewis, right? who's now in the Hall of Fame. Right, who's now OBE in the British Empire. Just understand that Oliver McCall loses the rematch because he seemed to have a mental breakdown during the fight. This is a grown man in a boxing match who's crying during the fight. Right, McCall, who used to spar with Mike Tyson in what were apparently legendary sparring sessions was a guy who had mental health problems. In my opinion, right? You have another fighter. I want you to look him up. He retires unbeaten. He beat David Tua. He knocks out Chris Bird. This was a special fighter, Ike Ibeabuchi. But Ibeabuchi had mental health problems. Again, in my opinion, right? Had mental health problems. He ends up, of course, having legal problems. His boxing career curtailed, unbeaten, but curtailed, right? Sometimes it's the fighter's psychological problems that actually give him the mental edge in fights, right? He has unbelievable energy, in part because he's manic, right? Understand what bipolar is about. Sometimes a fighter is going to feel down for whatever reason. You have a Hall of Famer right now who, in an interview, said that he knew on some nights before he entered the ring, on his way into the ring, that he didn't have it. This was before throwing a punch. He knew that he wasn't in a position to win the fight. This guy's well known. We'll save his name. He's in the Hall of Fame. Right? Just run some Google searches, you might come across his name. Right? You need to know that. Well, right now, I'm very concerned, very concerned about Devin Haney. Just understand, a guy who Devin Haney beat is about to fight Jack Catterall. Right? The water at 140 is deep. There are a lot of options for Devin Haney. Right? And let's be clear here. Haney, of course, should be considered unbeaten. The Ryan Garcia fight should be washed from your memory. Right? Haney getting knocked down multiple times, getting beaten up, really should be viewed as a tainted outcome that involved a designer drug that was found in Ryan Garcia's uh, specimen. Right, so just to understand, Devin Haney should be viewed as a champion. Devin Haney should be thinking about fighting the Jack Catterall's of the world. Think about all that's happening at 140. Matthias got dethroned by Paro. You know, Devin Haney, who has already fought in Australia, would be a great choice to fight Paro for Paro's title. Right? You know, 140 also has Teofimo Lopez. So you're looking at a division with a lot going on. Now you're young, you're in your 20s. 
Uh, you're on top of the mountain. You're unbeaten. Seems to me Devin Haney should be having the time of his life. He should be looking ahead of him. He should be looking at all the opportunities that exist out there. They're lucrative opportunities, right? He'd be getting a lot of money. This is his time. He's in his prime. Instead, Devin Haney, in my opinion, and let me just point out, I'm not a medical doctor, right? I'm just a YouTuber, right? But Devin Haney, in my opinion, is distraught. He's that guy who's bothered. He's that guy who has, proverbially, that stone in his shoe. It's bothering him every step he takes. He needs to get rid of it. That stone is the Ryan Garcia fight, the fight that got Garcia suspended. The fight where Devin Haney has kept his title. Right, Devin Haney has already moved past that fight. By the way, Haney got a lot of money off that fight. In fact, before the fight, and this is pivotal for the lawsuit, before the fight, Haney knew that Ryan Garcia didn't come close to making weight. Right, when they tell you your opponent is a pound over, that's bad enough in boxing. Well, here you have to keep going. Ryan Garcia is a few pounds over. Devin Haney agrees to go forward with the fight and agrees to take money for allowing the fight to go forward. Right? Understand, Devin Haney's title was not on the line that night because Ryan Garcia did not make weight. Haney goes into the fight knowing that Ryan Garcia missed weight by a few pounds. Now here's the problem. Right, Devin Haney gets blown out. A designer drug, and I concede, I've made a video here already, that getting this designer drug in your system is very hard to do. I even have a prop here. Right, I pointed out that the designer drug in Garcia's system was not caffeine. It's not like Ryan Garcia could have a coffee at Starbucks and then fail that drug test, right? He had a designer drug in his system that the common man would have a hard time finding, right? You really have to know people who know about this drug, who know about the effects the drug has. Right? Well, let me just say, Haney cannot get Ryan Garcia out of his head. So now Haney's suing Ryan Garcia for fraud. As I make this video, do you know why Ryan Garcia beat Devin Haney? Do any of us? Was it because Ryan Garcia, who has a punch, who has one of boxing's best left hooks, let's get past all the hype, Ryan Garcia has a special left hook. Right? Forget the name, forget the promoter, forget all of this other stuff. Ryan Garcia has a real left hook. Did Ryan Garcia win that fight because he's a better fighter than Devin Haney? Did Ryan Garcia win that fight because he came in with an unfair weight advantage over Devin Haney? Right? Only one guy here made weight. Right? The fight was ineligible for the championship. You can imagine a situation where Canelo agrees to fight David Benavides. Then Benavides comes in weighing three pounds, whatever, uh, more than the weight limit. Whereas Canelo trained hard, lost weight, made weight, made the sacrifice, right? You can imagine where after they rehydrate, Benavides weighs substantially more than three pounds more than Canelo, 
right? You could see a situation where it's an unlevel playing field. That's off the weight. We're not even talking about the drugs, right? Do we know with certainty whether Ryan Garcia took these illegal drugs deliberately? Folks, you don't know, right? I can be here talking about coffee. Let me use my prop again, right? I could be here talking about coffee and talking about how hard it is to inadvertently take Osterine. But Ryan Garcia has never admitted to cutting corners. Ryan Garcia hasn't said, hey, I took Osterine. Right? Just to understand, we know that these fighters have entourages. Some of these fighters have nutritional consultants. This is the sport we're in, folks. Right? They have nutritional consultants. They have people who prepare food for them. Ryan Garcia might not even have been cooking for himself, right? Because, of course, inboxing making weights important. It makes you eligible for the title when you're fighting against the champion. Right, so we have no proof, really no proof, that Ryan Garcia intentionally took Osterin. We have no proof that Ryan Garcia before this fight even knew what Osterin was. Now we have our suspicions, Right? I have a hard time believing that a professional athlete would inadvertently have Osterin in their system. Or that someone would risk a failed drug test by slipping a professional athlete, who no doubt is that person's cash cow, with some Osterin. Right? So understand, unless Ryan Garcia in Discovery find someone who says, look, I spoke with Ryan Garcia and I said, hey player, you want to take some Osterin? And he said, yeah, well, you know, what, what is Osterin? What does that do for me? And then they had a conversation and Ryan Garcia came back and said, yeah, I want to take Osterin and, you know, let's hook it up and there's a connect involved and they get the Osterin and Garcia's on a regimen. Unless you somehow stumble on that testimony. Folks, in my opinion, Devin Haney's going to lose the lawsuit. Right? Understand. There could be Ryan Garcia's, there could be Osterin in Ryan Garcia's system that Ryan Garcia didn't know about. When you're suing someone for fraud, that has a high pleading requirement. You have to literally allege intentional misrepresentation. Right here, because it was disclosed, because we all know that Ryan Garcia failed weight, because Devin Haney knew that before entering the ring, he had the option of not going forward with the fight. He instead took money to go forward with the fight. Understand the extra weight can't serve as the basis for this lawsuit. Right? No, this lawsuit has to be keyed on the Osterin. Right? That's something Devin Haney didn't know about. The big question that's going to be, in my opinion, really impossible to prove is whether Ryan Garcia knew about the Osterin in his system, right? If you don't have proof that Ryan Garcia was an intentional juicer, someone who signed off proverbially on taking Osterin, if you don't have that proof, you lose the fraud claim, right? Folks, I, I don't think in a sport where you know, Antonio Margarito got suspended. His trainer, Capitillo, got suspended. Panama Lewis got suspended. 
I think it's unlikely that anyone is going to step forward and say, hey, I spoke with Ryan about taking Osterin. I got Osterin for Ryan to take. Ryan knew he was taking Osterin. Folks, I'll be the most shocked man doing boxing videos on YouTube if that evidence comes forward. Right? I'm expecting this lawsuit to be dropped. But whether or not the lawsuit goes forward, what's clear is that today, Devin Haney, with all of this opportunity in front of him, right? He's a big name at 140. People want to fight him. He has generated big box office, including his fight against Ryan Garcia. We all want to see how he bounces back from what happened in the ring that night. With all of this opportunity, with seven or eight figures in front of him for his next fight, he's thinking about what happened in the past. He's thinking about a fighter who, quite frankly, he never has to fight again. Right? Understand, you know, boxing fans can be tough. Right? They're certainly tough with Canelo right now. Right? They're saying, hey, you're not fighting Benavides, then we're going to overlook <laughs> all the good you've done in the sport and we're going to boo you. Right? We're going we're gonna to say that you're ducking guys, even though you didn't duck Mayweather, Miguel Cotto, Eris Landy Lara. We're going to say you're ducking guys now. Right? Understand with Ryan Garcia, he has a carve out. Just like Canelo would have a carve-out if, in fact, Benavides ended up with Osterin in his system. Right? A fighter who says, hey, man, this guy cheated on me the first time. Is going to have many boxing fans say, yeah, you know, Ryan doesn't deserve another shot at Devin Haney. Devin's already been through a lot. Right? Osterin, that's going to rule out a lot of people. You know, Lucien Boutte, in my opinion... One, one man's opinion, is a borderline Hall of Famer. The problem is his resume includes Osterin. It's hard to unring that bell. Right? It's hard to unring that bell. So let me just say, um, Devin Haney's in a special place right now. If he has a fight against a competitive opponent. Let's say he signs to fight Teofimo Lopez, who's dangerous. Right? If you're there thinking, who's going to win this fight? And if you start thinking about the mental distress, that's what it is, folks, that Devin Haney has suffered from knowing that he got beaten up that night. Right? Haney sees himself as alpha. He understands that the video of that fight's still out there. That many people, that fight was a commercial success, so a lot of people saw Devin Haney getting dropped off shots. It bothers him. It bothers him so much that he's suing a guy who's already been suspended, who's already lost some of his purse, who's already been publicly disgraced. It's even worse than that. He's suing the promoter. What did the promoter do? <laughs> the promoter puts together a lucrative fight. Right? I got to tell you, if I'm a member of the jury, you know, unless they show that the promoter, who has many other superstar fighters, unless they show that the promoter somehow was passing out Osterin, if I'm a juror, I'm going to say, wow, why is the promoter in this case? I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to find the promoter not guilty here. This is a distraught plaintiff who wants to blame a lot of people without having proof of intent. Right? So, look, I'm not saying 
that I myself think corners weren't cut here by the Ryan Garcia team, right? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying I don't believe it can be proved. I believe that Devin Haney has to do a cost-benefit analysis and realize, hey, if I fight Paro in Australia, that's a multi-million dollar fight. My day only has 24 hours in it. I need to focus on that. I can't waste any of my time on some lawsuit involving a guy who the boxing community has already found to be worthy of a suspension, to be worthy of sanctions, right? Boxing fans already know Osterin was in the guy's sample, right? I hope Devin Haney reaches the point where he thinks to himself, going after Ryan Garcia further is not worth my time unless we're talking about a rematch. Maybe the lawsuit is leverage to get a rematch against Ryan Garcia if you believe, and this is a big if, that Ryan Garcia can make 140 pounds again. He didn't for the first fight. Young guys eventually grow up. Maybe that age has led to more weight as it has in many of us. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let me also point out, too, I mentioned Ike Ibeabuchi. Look up his past. Chris Burr, who he stopped, is the guy who beat Vitaly Klitschko. Right? Understand, while Klitschko was winning that fight, Bird was so hard to hit that Klitschko tore out his shoulder during the fight and could not finish the fight. So that's a win for Chris Bird. Legitimate win. Right? Just understand, he didn't make it that many rounds against Ike Ibeabuchi, who found a way to hit him. That's the level of volume that Ibeabuchi threw. Then, of course, figure out what happened to Ike Ibeabuchi. Right? Let's just say the problem with mental health is you can't turn it on and off. Right? If you have cognitive problems, if you're someone who's prone to mood swings, there are going to be times in your life where you make bad decisions. Right? I encourage people to look up Aikai Bayabuchi and Oliver McCall, right? If you're into sparring stories, understand McCall and prime Mike Tyson. I'm talking about 80s, early 90s era Mike Tyson would go at it in the gym and people were astounded, right? Think about the era. You have Oliver McCall giving Tyson all he can handle in sparring and actually beating Lennox Lewis. Folks, that's the top rung of the heavyweight division during that era, right? With an acknowledgement that Riddick Bowe was also on the top rung during that era, right? Well, just think it through. I'm just telling you mental health issues derailed both McCall's career and Ibea Bucci's career. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Let's hope Devin Haney gets some perspective, right? We all have bad nights. We knew before the Ryan Garcia fight that Garcia had an explosive left hook. Just look at the Oscar Duarte fight, right? We knew we had an explosive left hook. Haney needs to realize he's not the first man who got caught by it. Right? Boxing's had many alphas. Understand, Jack Johnson, my favorite boxer in history, got knocked down by the middleweight champion. Right? That would be like Hamza Shiraz. Well, in fact, it would be like Janabek knocking down Usyk. Right? Guys get knocked down. There's some nights where alphas are not going to be alphas. Haney needs to get over that initial shock. I think one of the problems in the Haney case was that he was unbeaten at the time. 
had he suffered a couple of losses, I believe he'd be able to put this in perspective a little bit better. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.